Welcome back, Wood Turners. Today we're going to go break down some stock that I got from a friend of mine. I got some uh, limbs and trunk segments that I'm going to turn into some bowl blanks and some uh, maybe some other spindle blanks, tool blanks, whatever, using my little Craftsman electric chainsaw. So let's go do that. This little uh, platform is something I made up um, as a cradle for the logs, which you can see there under the bush. Um, it gives me a place to securely hold the logs during cutting and also um, helps protect the chain. So these are going to become some bowl blanks. I'm going to cut the uh, blank rounds out at the bandsaw. But I'm going to go ahead and process, up the rest, process the rest of this lumber um, into what I think can be usable. Alright guys, this is my keeper pile. So you can see I got a couple of uh, crotch pieces in there. That should uh, make this should make for some nice bowl stock. Some of these ones that haven't been split in half. Um, I'm going to do that on the bandsaw. Over here is my scrap pile. So these are the things that uh, I took to remove the checking on the ends and uh, a couple of other pieces. You can see that one's splitting up pretty nasty already. Um, so those are the uh, those are the burn pile. So all in all, I don't think too bad for a quick few minutes of work. Um, another few minutes on the bandsaw, and then um, we'll seal them with some anchor seal to start the drying process. Alright guys, what I'm going to do now is uh, mark some of these for center. Uh, the ones I can cut up into rounds really quickly. Um, the others I'm going to have to cut in half before I do that. But just to give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing, I pre-made this set of discs that I keep here under the bandsaw. And uh, they start at 3 inches and they go all the way up to almost 13 inches, which is about the capacity of my lathe. I'm not going to try to push it really much beyond that, so I think I can, in general, get up to about a 13 inch bowl off there. So some of these I'm just going to have to go through this trial and error as far as finding a size that I think is going to work. That one looks like it could be about a 7 incher right there. So I have already, the holes are drilled in the center, so what I can do is I can take this, uh, it's actually a roofing nail, and tap it right in in the center. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that on the other side. So this is just to give me an idea of how nice a uh, big a bowl I can get out of this. I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to center it up that same way, and I'm going to tap this in here. Okay, now you can see that uh, this is now ready to go to the bandsaw to be cut out for the round. Okay, now when I'm done, these pop right out, and I have a hole here now that marks the center uh, for where I can mount this blank on the lathe, or if I needed to add a recess here um, for mounting it on the chuck, I could uh, center the, the Forster bit on the drill press using that hole. So 
What we're going to do next is seal these with a little bit of anchor seal. Okay guys, next time you're in Home Depot, grab a couple of these. Uh, these are paint can openers. These will spare your screwdrivers from being used improperly. And they make opening the uh, paint or anchor seal, whatever you're using, um, something that's really easy because it provides a lever action that doesn't mess up the rim of the can. So, uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out is, so there's the anchor seal. After I get through sealing with the anchor seal and let it dry as an extra measure, I picked up some of this uh, packing uh, cellophane or plastic or whatever it is. Uh, so this is, you know, some of you will recognize it as the stuff that you bundle up boxes on pallets with. Um, it's also for, you know, shipping and whatnot. Um, there was a tip uh, from uh, Reed Gray, also known as Robo Hippie. Uh, he uses this for um, sealing end grain on bowls uh, while they're drying. So my application is a little different because I'm using it on bowl blanks and I think he uses it on uh, partially finished bowls. So last but not least, uh, for those of you that frequent the Harbor Freight store, you recognize this cheap brush as one of their specials. Um, uh, usually, uh, I don't know, it goes for half a buck or less. I load up on them when they're on sale. And uh, these are great disposable brushes. Um, I use them for the anchor seal because after I'm done with that, I'm not washing it out. I'm just going to throw it away. So. Uh, generally, again, uh, all you need to do with the anchor seal, here's the blank, is, um, oh, and you can see I've got a little inclusion on there. That's going to make that one really interesting to turn. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just coat this primarily on this area. So what I do is I just uh, take a big old dollop of the uh, anchor seal and just start rubbing it on the uh, end grain there. Okay. Just want a good coat. You don't want to spare this too much, but you don't need it dripping off either because it will run. Okay, I'm going to hit the face grain of this one too um, because it's uh, it was from a crotch and it's got some wild grain in it. So I don't want it to get too split up on the face of it because it just might do that. I've had some do that to me. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a coat like this. A little just like that. Okay, and that one is done. Um, now it just needs to dry. And uh, once it has dried again, I'm going to wrap up the end grain with the cellophane, not the face of it. And uh, then I'm going to put it out in that little shed and let it dry. Okay, for a piece like this, which I need to cut down the center to um, remove a portion, small portion for the pith, um, I normally check for any other natural splitting that's going on here because that's where the log naturally wants to open up. Um, this one, I'm getting lucky. I think I see a little bit right here. Um, and it's negligible. This side I can't see anything. So I'm going to look for what would produce the best bowls. Um, sometimes I'm looking for deep. Sometimes I'm looking for width. Um, this one's actually fairly round. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get the bandsaw set up for... that's a good height right there. Okay, and we're going to just saw this right down the middle. So uh, you can see there's some nice grain color going on in here. Um, so there's uh, looks like something going on inside this grain. I'm not sure. He's going to make some really nice bowls. You can see how I got that one set up. Um, so obviously I still have to cut the round out of it. But uh, one thing I again like to mention is you know setting up your bandsaw with that six inch riser block really gives you that capacity to do your own stock breakdown. Um, I want to say that the kit for this ran about a hundred bucks, but um, 
overall that probably saved me having to buy a, a larger bandsaw, which again I might do someday. All right, guys. So now, uh, now that this um, anchor seal is dry, I'm just going to take this uh, plastic wrap and put it on here, nice and tight. Make sure that I get a good uh, stretch on it. So, and then I just give it a wrap or two. Like that. Break that off. Okay. You see that on there? Just the edges are sealed up. That's ready now to go into storage for uh, drying. I'm going to do the rest of these and uh, we'll see what we got. Well, Turners, there is the haul of blanks produced from those few logs. There's 15 bulb blanks there, ranging in size from uh, 6 inches to 9 inches across. So that was about the maximum capacity I could get out of those logs. Right over here is the well, I guess you would call these uh, offcuts. So that's the waste pile that's now going to go into the, the burn bin. So uh, all in all, not a bad lot. Um, and uh, now I'm going to just uh, leave them here for a couple days and then move them out into the longer term storage for drying. Well, Turners, thanks again for watching this video. And one other thing I was going to mention, uh, make sure that you... Uh, Take care of your bandsaw table after you cut up a bunch of wet wood on it. Uh, treat it with a rust inhibitor uh, like WD-40. Give it a good scrubbing and clean it off and maybe even oil it. Otherwise, you'll get rust on there in a heartbeat. So uh, rem please remember to subscribe, like, and comment. And check out my YouTube channel. Uh, take a look at some of the other awesome wood turners and woodworkers uh, that I have some subscriptions to out there. So uh, thanks again. We'll see you at the next one.